Namaskaram. Uh, welcome everyone. Today is, uh, uh, we are in an interview series with uh, uh, fund manager series. This is uh, Amit Prem Chandrani. Uh, sir is from uh, UTI mutual fund. And uh, I will talk about my story about uh, mutual fund uh, and uh, my story about U UTI mutual fund. When I was a small child, about uh, six years, my father got uh, agency from uh, UTI and he was a, his LIC agent. And the day he got was on a uh, November 26th, that was my birthday. So I always think that, uh, um, uh, you know, one of the birthday gift was UTI agency and UTI has given the big board, much better big board than what LIC has given. So that way it was a very proud feeling. Uh, and that is a small association we had uh, as a family with uh, UTA and uh, mutual fund industry. And um, after my education, I went for other job. Then finally, I knew that somehow I will come to this mutual fund industry or uh, stock market. And finally, um, we are doing a mutual fund distribution. And uh, we are trying to now through this mode, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to educate people uh, how to invest, how to save uh, from their humble salary, uh, hard earned money. And uh, the kind of interview which we do uh, with people like you, we get an opportunity to hear it from experts, uh, people who manage money. Uh, so that is, uh, we consider as a blessing. Uh, our audience will get to know today that uh, how people at fund management team really work uh, in this field. Thank you and uh, welcome to our show. Prem sir has uh, been with the UTA uh, for uh, you know 14 plus years and uh, managing four funds. And uh, there are uh, it, with a lot of experience. And could you please just take, as an introduction sake, uh, uh, take us through that uh, after education, how did you get into money management field and uh, how you are enjoying this journey? Thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, at this forum. Uh, so, uh, after MBA, uh, uh, my first job was on the sales side in JP Morgan. Uh, and uh, in JP Morgan, when I was uh, associating with a European bank analyst, that was the epicenter of the global financial crisis. So, I've seen the entire uh, global financial uh, crisis in the field uh, per se. Uh, then uh, I was promoted to JP Morgan India uh, to the India office as a bank associate. Uh, and uh, soon after, I joined in three months B.S. Stearns, uh, went bankrupt. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, when I was in J.P. Morgan, Lehman also went bankrupt. Uh, and then I moved to Deutsche Bank again as a, uh, in the equity team as a uh, banking associate. And after working on the sell side for three years, uh, I thought that buy side is a better uh, place to be in given that it is less volatile as compared to sell side in terms of uh, 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 the overall job description and I moved to uh, the buy side which is uh, and my first job in the buy side was UTI mutual fund okay. uh, as a banking analyst I covered banks from 2009 uh, to um, uh, 2022 March so I was a bank analyst from 2009 to 2022 in between, I also uh, covered cement and telecom for some time and UTI mutual fund as a research analyst. My fund management responsibility started in 2014 when I was assigned the responsibility of the banking and financial services fund. And then uh, in 2018 Feb, I was uh, I started co-managing the value opportunity fund along with Vetri, who is the CIO okay. in UTI. Uh, and, uh, in 2022, uh, I was given additional responsibility of uh, uh, regular saving fund, which is a uh, conservative uh, hybrid fund, uh, independent responsibility of value opportunity fund. And uh, when uh, in 2022 November, I was given additional responsibility of the dividend yield fund. So it has been a progress from a associate to a, a research analyst to a fund manager for the last say 15 years. Okay, very good. Uh, you, you know, these days uh, a lot of people want to get into a career like yours. And uh, what is your advice? Is it uh, IAM is a good option to enter there or uh, people with the humble graduation degree and uh, uh, MBA, how can uh, enter into the space which you are in now? The process of getting into IAM helped me a lot in terms of uh, I never realized at that point of time that it will help me in my journey in a fund manager role because uh, you know CAT as an exam 
uh, is a multiple choice question mm -hmm. where the time limit is there mm -hmm. you have to answer as many questions correctly and if you answer incorrectly there's a negative mark and there are generally four options at that time when we, I was giving CAT. Many of the answers used to come from elimination. Okay. So what is the incorrect, most probable incorrect answer? If you can eliminate, then you can okay. uh, kind of find the right answer. Right answer okay. And in many mathematical or uh, data interpretation related questions, you will kind of get stuck because there are two answers almost both of both them are. look uh, correct and then you have to eliminate one. In fund management, half the job is eliminating what you don't want to do. Okay. So the journey or the learning from CAT helps me in eliminating very basic mistakes in fund management. And uh, if I am able to eliminate risk and mistakes, a lot of the job is kind of well done. Mm -hmm. After that, there is a set of universe of say 100 to 150 companies which qualifies after eliminating say uh, more than 200 companies in our coverage, then it becomes more a job of uh, uh, meeting companies, uh, whether the company is in line with the style of the fund and all that uh, assessment uh, is based on the background or the education that we have okay. got through uh, uh, the professional degrees like CA, CFA or IIM. Okay. So I think from a, for a budding uh, uh, invest, uh, new uh, student who wants to make a career, he should definitely invest in uh, uh, education, higher education. It will first of all help him eliminate what is, uh, uh, the risk of making mistakes. Second, it gives a uh, very good boost to confidence because we are always dealing with uncertainty. We have to take decisions based on uh, uh, variables and our decision may go wrong. There is no certainty in our decision making process. Okay, okay. So how to be confident while making a uh, decision in an uncertain environment, that confidence comes from our uh, uh, postgraduate education. Okay, thank you, thank you. You know, these days a lot of people are going for uh, foreign education uh, and uh, a lot of people uh, think that uh, uh, that is a place where uh, you get a better education and everything in India. Um, uh, not much things are here. So, what is your take on, uh, you know, uh, people who are going abroad and uh, looking for a career in outside and what are the opportunities we can see for ourselves or our citizens in India? That will be a great, uh, you know, help for the audience. If one can afford education uh, in foreign countries, he is welcome to go there. But we think that uh, the kind of uh, uh, education facilities which we have in India, especially post-graduation, are at par with much some of the best institutes in the world. The kind of growth that one can get uh, in an opportunity set of jobs in India is much higher than uh, uh, what you can get globally. Uh, as you see that uh, the global economy are anyway growing much slower than India. So the growth that you will get in, a, in working in India is, uh, is 2 to 3x more than uh, what you will get in an overseas setting. Uh, adjusted for the cost of living, mm -hmm. the salaries in India are much better. So you okay. can afford a much luxurious lifestyle in India uh, as compared to if you are working in a overseas environment because the cost of living is much higher. Okay. Uh, and uh, obviously the emotional connect uh, you have with India uh, should play an important part in deciding whether you should want to stay in India or outside. I have a very strong emotional bonding with the country. Okay. So uh, I always prefer to stay back in India as compared to uh, trying to look for opportunities outside India. Okay, thank you. And you, you mentioned that uh, the lifestyle which you can afford here and uh, going outside and uh, seeing that, uh, that clearly you are saying that the ability to save here is much better. Sure. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> so, could you advise, uh, uh, you know, us that, uh, uh, you know, what is the importance of saving from the first salary and uh, how they need to ensure that the budgeting and uh, uh, spare the money for investing. Uh, if you can throw some lights on that, it would be great. So, uh, at the initial stage of our career, uh, normally uh, our salaries uh, are not that high and as we gain experience, we, uh, we gain uh, much more salaries which are uh, which can flow into the investable pool or savings. But we should always, start, right from the start, we should inculcate a habit of saving because uh, if you invest uh, over a long period of time, the power of compounding which is called the eight wonder of the world by some investors kind of plays a very important part. 
so uh, i do remember from my first saving i started an sip uh, and uh, at that time i was very reluctant to start I an mean, sip because i was i started my career in mumbai after mba and you know the cost of living in mumbai is very high especially the rental part but and saving was very difficult but still i managed to start saving at that point of time and that has helped a lot uh, uh, at that point of time the global financial crisis happened in the next one year one and a half years so uh, as a naive investor at that point of time i thought what was the point of saving but uh, i didn't make the mistake of withdrawing money during that crisis i kept on Invest. saving as a, or investing as a habit and that helped me a lot during 2015 when i bought a house in um, a expensive city like mumbai because that saving which compounded over a period of time okay which kind of covered almost the entire down payment for my house okay so uh, what you save and the amount you save is not that important for how many years you continue that saving and help it compound is much more important okay can you just uh, th- uh, take a little more simplified uh, you know uh, definition for compound interest because y- you mentioned it's very easily yeah. but what is a compound interest really <laughs> so compound interest is basically uh, if you are keeping say a money in bank and you s- tell the bank to not pay me interest pay me the interest at maturity so you are keeping a money say for 5 years so in the first year you are earning say 5% interest so the next year the principal becomes 105 so now you get a 5% income not on 100 you get that 5% income on 105 the third year it becomes say 111 you get a interest on 111 rather than 100 and by that logic this 100 instead of becoming 125 in 5 years to just give a mm. approximate example becomes say 135 similar uh, if uh, similar horizon if you have on uh, equity equity generally has a 14 15% uh, rate of return uh, on a long term basis if you take the starting point from 1980 Uh, when the sensex started to now uh, the sensex has given 15% broadly return on a long term basis despite so many crises mm-hmm. but you would have experienced that long term compounding only if you have remained invested because your 100 rupees invested in 1980 every year it would have compounded or got a 15% kind of a return and this 100 rupees principal if you had not withdrawn uh, from the equity market could have ran into lakhs mm. in 40 years yeah so who should be the ideal uh, customer for equity because uh, short time you will see a lot of uh, uh, crisis and everything and there are a lot of people ask us that uh, is it the right time to invest in equity uh, uh, or should i invest this much of money in equity uh, how much i should invest in equity and uh, the, the the question which there are people who comes with the money they asked two questions mainly one is that is it the right time to invest in equity or how much i should invest in equity so what is your answer uh, for that type of uh, questions uh, is it a right time to invest in equity uh, is a, is not a relevant question for a investor why sir you should right. asset do asset allocation and part of the investment of your saving should be in equity uh, uh, and uh, as i mentioned if you had started investing in 1980 to 2023 you have got a cagr of 15% and during that period you had the harshan mehta scam the it.com bubble the 911 crash the global financial crisis the covid uh, crisis so you have seen all the crises and still you have made 15% cagr over the last 40 45 years so uh, when to invest is not a relevant question at all yeah how much to invest depends upon um, what is the risk profile that you have what is the age profile you have and you should decide the investment based on these two parameters rather than going to invest okay okay thank you uh, so uh, when you look at it uh, this one how much to invest it's definitely uh, personal finance and financial planning play a big role right so what is your take on doing financial planning before uh, investing into equity or uh, starting investing so it depends on the sorry saving pool if you have very small saving pool yeah. uh, 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 you should start investing uh, in index funds yeah. and you, it doesn't require too much of uh, uh, financial planning in the sense of in an organized form of way you can just invest pick up a uh, index fund 
and uh, that fund will just mimic the index and the cost is also very low. But if you have a larger investment pool and large part of your investment is getting into uh, equity or savings, you should obviously ad take advice from a financial planner because he will decide uh, your uh, different avenues of investment based on the risk profile you have, based on the obligations you have, how many children you have, the education requirement of your children, what is the medical expense, do you have medical insurance, whether you want to build a medical pool, uh, do you have, are you working in an organized sector or unorganized sector, do you have a retirement corpus or you don't have a retirement corpus. So the entire planning will be done by the financial uh, advisor and then he will advise you how much of your asset allocation should be in equity, debt, uh, gold. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends largely on the asset pool that you have. Uh, Okay, okay, good. And, and you know, we, we spoke about fund, right? So, in your definition, because it's always good to hear from a fund manager, what is mutual fund means? <laughs> mutual fund is a very basic product where many investors mm. come in and invest different sums of money. The money can be as low as 500 rupees to mm. as high as 50 crore rupees, and all these pool of investors are treated equally. Mm. A person who is having a 50 crore investment is not treated differently from a person who is having a 500 rupees investment. All these uh, money gets pooled and they get a unit based on the uh, overall AUM of the fund uh, and the time to at total, which fund, they, we total fund value. So if there are 100 investors of 50 crore and lakh investor of five, uh, 500 rupees, all this entire money gets pooled and invested in, uh, uh, in an equity fund in stocks depending on the theme or the uh, investment objective of the fund and in case of debt depending on the uh, whether it is a liquid fund or a, a high duration fund uh, according to the uh, fund objective it gets invested. The returns of the fund are completely dependent on the how the market performs in an equity fund or in a debt fund. Uh, debt is generally considered to be much less risky as compared to risk uh, as compared to equity. Uh, but equity uh, gives more return on a uh, on a long term basis as compared to debt which we have seen over the last say 40 years. Okay. okay. So we, we spoke about uh, mutual fund assets, uh, this one, uh, definition and everything. Uh, but in your case, you are managing four funds, right? And uh, uh, for, for example, you mainly uh, value uh, discovery fund which you are investing. Uh, before talking opportunity about value opportunity. value value opportunity fund okay so <laughs> okay so uh, before that uh, what is a different uh, type of mutual fund and uh, for example can i enter into uh, value uh, opportunity fund in the initial space or uh, for example i am first investing in equity so how do i in, let's say 50000 rupees i am starting a sip uh, and i am planning to do for long time and it is uh, in equity so what would be my allocation uh, large cap, mid cap, all the it is there. So, where should I, would I place uh, value opportunity fund or sure. what will be the allocation? So, first of all, uh, you should diversify the risk. Uh, if you are making allocation to uh, equity say 50,000 rupees, uh, you should not fo be focused on a particular style. Hmm. By style, we means there is a growth style and there is a value style. So, you should invest both in growth as well as value uh, oriented funds. Uh, so that which style will do well, uh, none of us know at what at a small uh, in a short period of time. But on a long period, we'll see that both the styles broadly converge. Okay. In terms of value, large cap, flexi cap, focused, the th uh, the different categories which have been created, uh, large cap is l low risk uh, uh, investment because they invest in high quality blue chip companies, Big generally in the top hundred stocks. Uh, flexi cap. Uh, is a category where uh, there is a uh, there is no restriction in terms of investment across market caps. So uh, flexi cap takes exposure in small, mid, and large cap. Value as a category invest in stocks which are considered to be undervalued. But the definition of what is a value fund is not defined. It's uh, dependent on the fund manager's uh, 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 principle of value investing. Focus is a category where uh, the portfolio is concentrated uh, at 30 or less number of stocks, so it is less diversified. It is relatively a high risk and high return kind of, hopefully high return kind of a strategy. Uh, then there is mid cap funds where uh, they invest in stocks which are between 100 to 250 market cap 
uh, based on uh, the MC classification and there are small cap funds which invest in companies uh, at least 65 percent of the investment is in companies which is more than 250 uh, 250 uh, in terms of market cap and above. So uh, as an investor if you are an initial investor you should start off with large cap flexi cap and value is also kind of a flexi cap in terms of uh, investment objective it can invest across market cap so you can invest through these channels large cap flexi cap value and maybe having some exposure to mid caps okay and then as you are more comfortable in terms of uh, the risk uh, uh, the riskiness of the equity as a asset class you should venture into focused and small cap as a category oh okay okay so uh, initially into consistent then into more uh, high high risk high return then you can think about venturing you don't start off with high risk high risk high return okay. because by definition there are higher risk uh, in that uh, okay. Okay. okay and there is a, there is a lot of uh, advertisement or there is a trend also happening because uh, some point of time digital was performing really good and some point of time small cap definitely was showing a pretty decent return then uh, now everyone want to go behind this kind of uh, instrument because people also come and ask that okay, this is small cap is performing good I want to put the money there and why are you not giving that fund so the, the number always attractive and what is your take on running behind this uh, performance and investing so if someone has uh, actually seen what are the returns uh, if you uh, if you invest in the best asset class of the last year you will be surprised okay so it is very difficult for the asset class which is best in the last year to be again the best in the next year consistent uh, so there are no categories which are best in every year yeah. so you have to look at compounding so if you look at on a risk adjusted basis we have seen that mid caps have done well uh, much better than small caps on a risk adjusted basis so we, uh, we would urge investors to not look at near term returns uh, and look at long term risk adjusted return to arrive at a portfolio composition. The issue with small cap investing is not about returns, the issue is the mortality because okay. the mortality of companies in small cap is much higher as compared to large cap and mid cap. Hence the riskiness of the small cap portfolio is much higher but the ability to generate alpha mm -hmm. is much higher in small cap as compared to mid cap and large cap because as I said investing is largely about uh, avoiding mistakes mm. and if you can generate alpha by avoiding mistake in small caps by not investing in the stocks which are having high mortality risk then you can generate a lot of alpha oh, okay and you you are uh, uh, investing in uh, your banking and uh, banking uh, fund of banking and financials so who should come into the sectoral fund uh, and what is the stage they should and venture into any sectoral type of funds so sectoral funds uh, should not be uh, beyond 10% of your overall equity investment is what we suggest investors and the reason is because the experience of an investor in a sectoral fund can be very different from what he is seeing in the equity markets on a broader index. There have been instances where there have been 5% zero return five, on a 5 year basis sectoral funds are given zero or negative return while uh, broader indexes are given 10-12% returns. So uh, it has to be very timely and very uh, very limited exposure to sectoral fund because uh, uh, it's very very likely or very possible that sectoral funds may not give as much return as uh, a broader market and there are periods where sectoral fund will give very uh, much higher return than the market. Okay. So you, timing is much more important in a sectoral fund than spending time in the market. So if you are uh, uh, extremely confident about a sector doing well, you can invest 5 to 10 percent of a overall portfolio but nothing beyond 10 percent of your overall uh, savings should be in sectoral funds. Oh, okay, okay. Now you, you are you uh, talked about uh, a few of your funds and uh, these things. How will be a fund manager typical day and what are the major things which you take care of uh, in a day? Sure, in the day, uh, <laughs> in the morning I start out with reading newspaper. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, after having half an hour of uh, physical exercises and then uh, there is 25 to 30 minutes of newspaper and then you travel to work and we have almost one and a half hour of morning meeting so we have a team of uh, 13 14 analysts uh, and we have discussion on companies or sectors every day uh, 
from 9 to approximately 10 30 it can extend to 11 o'clock also in some cases and we discuss companies uh, analyst is a sector specialist uh, where he can talk about the company in that sector and fund managers try to uh, and educate the fund manager on the sector or the companies and fund manager have to take a view based on uh, various parameters uh, uh, on a specific stock uh, based on interaction with that analyst the entire team sits uh, during that one and a half hour at okay. the same place and then a uh, large part of our uh, day goes in uh, either uh, reading research reports or meeting management or meeting different uh, sell side analysts also to get their views on different sectors and different companies. During result season we have to uh, look at uh, companies uh, uh, results, we uh, read con calls, transcript or uh, yes. attend con calls, uh, we read annual reports uh, of companies which are uh, of interest to us, we publish or we do channel checks. Uh, uh, through competitors about a company that we may be investing in or the suppliers or uh, 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 the channel partners of that company to get a, a more uh, offline check of how the company is uh, performing and uh, we have our own internal reviews uh, so sometime we spend on internally reviewing our portfolio uh, on a uh, maybe monthly or a quarterly basis so this is how broadly our uh, day passes by. Uh, okay, so normally these days uh, we have a lot of uh, people entering into market uh, on DMAT account, they trade uh, by themselves and uh, I'm sure that uh, they can't spend uh, time like what you mentioned now, uh, but uh, what are the minimum uh, five, six, uh, three, four things they should be looking at before picking a stock? They should leave stock picking to professionals rather than trying to uh, uh, pick stocks uh, uh, on an individual basis because they don't spend too much time, they don't need to spend my time and if you see uh, uh, Sebi had published a report recently about how many people uh, from a trading point of view actually make money and that data came out. This is not DMAT, uh, this is FNO trading for 90% people don't make money uh, as high as 90%. And the same time if you are an investor you can see that if you are invested in uh, mutual funds or a, or a market over a long period of time you have made 14-15 percent CAGR. So as a as a uh, first time investor or a, as a investor investing in mutual through mutual fund is a much safer and much more prudent option as compared to investing uh, individually because they are a set of professional investors whose entire day is involved in analyzing companies, meeting companies. Uh, uh, their exposure to the level of management in companies, their exposure to the level of information is much much superior to an individual because of the uh, organizational structures involved in managing money. Okay. So why not give it to professional? So when we have any ailment, we don't uh, try to uh, cure ourselves. We go to a doctor and take an expert advice. So same in while managing money, you should take expert advice and expert advice. Uh, in which fund to invest is through an IFA or through a distributor and who actually manages the money is through a mutual fund uh, fund manager. Oh, okay. And uh, if, if, if UTA as a, as a uh, fund house, um, you will have a universe too uh, before okay. uh, selecting the company, right? Uh, what is the criteria you broadly look at it to enter those stocks into your uh, yes. first universe? <laughs> So, yeah, so very good question. We have an approach called score alpha, uh, which we use uh, in uh, uh, deciding the companies which will come into universe and also in portfolio allocation. In score alpha, there are broadly two parameters. One is operating cash flow and the second is return on capital employed. Operating cash flow is like if you are selling uh, fruits mm. through a stall, yeah. through a, a fruit vendor is selling fruit. Mm. Now, if a fruit vendor is selling fruit on credit, mm. he may think that he has profits, mm. but at the end of the month, if he doesn't recover the money, mm. that profit is just an illusion. Mm. So just think of operating cash flow as I am earning EBITDA, mm. but is that EBITDA getting stuck in working capital? Mm. So a fruit vendor, real profit. real profit is only when that EBITDA gets converted into cash, when he actually receives cap, if he is selling in credit. The real money comes the in. The real money comes No in. EBITDA, nothing will so, here. So, a company who generates cash flow consistently say for 5 years is a C1 company, 
a company who is much more inconsistent in generating cash flow is a C3 company. Okay. And a company who never generates cash flow is kind of more or less out of our so, investment universe on, a, uh, on most cases. Second is, say if you are a uh, fruit vendor and you have um, got supply of fruit of say 1 lakh rupees today and you will make profit only and these are perishable items. Okay. You will make profit only if you have sell, sold it at much more than 1 lakh and you are selling it say at 1 lakh 20,000 for mm -hmm. the day. Mm -hmm. So 20,000 is the profit that you make. So 20,000 divided by 1 lakh is 20 percent you making on this is not 1 lakh is not a one day sum 20 percent one day is a super normal return but converted yeah. into annual basis mm. on a yearly basis you are making 20 percent. But again suppose instead of 1 lakh uh, 10, 20,000 you are making 1 lakh 10,000. So you are earning 10 percent. So companies we similarly companies who make more than 18 percent return on the capital that they are invested on a pre-tax basis are R1 companies mm. and companies who make less than uh, uh, 10% are R2, R3 companies and companies in between are R3. So we divide the companies in these two categories and they, we have 365 companies which are under investable universe. There okay. are more than 5000 companies which are listed in India. Out of that only, this out of that only 365 are under the universe and there is a score alpha approach which we use into classifying companies and then which companies invest in which uh, uh, makes uh, their presence in which portfolio depends on the portfolio style. Okay. So basically that is a filter from there only yeah. Uh, yeah. the minimum quality you can expect this. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No, it, it's a great uh, conversation and what is your, uh, you know, final advice to people in Kerala in terms of uh, they get salary and uh, they should have savings and they should have investing. So in that theme, what is your final advice to uh, our audience? So you should uh, uh, saving, uh, you should not postpone the saving uh, culture for, for a single day. Uh, uh, even in SIP, uh, people think that they can time the market. Nobody can time the market. So you should not think about timing your savings. Uh, you should make a disciplined approach of say investing uh, at least 30 percent of your 30 uh, percent uh, 30 percent of your income uh, in savings. And depending on your risk profile, this 30 percent can be divided 70-30 between equity and fixed income. And if you are much more risk covers, you can start with 50-50 in equity and fixed income and in fi equity you should start uh, initially with large cap, flexi cap, mid cap and then you move around the risk curve. Uh, but at least 30 percent of your income uh, you should try to invest uh, 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 on a long term no, basis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It's, a, it's a great uh, having a talk with you and uh, uh, it's always uh, we can help our audience enhance the knowledge. I definitely I got uh, a lot of uh, extra knowledge and confidence to face my people from tomorrow onwards after having this conversation. Thank you so much for taking your time out. Thank you for giving me the time.